Hello, hello, hello. How you doing? 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 Yeah. Hello, 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 hello. Just keeping an eye on things over here. Hence my looking down. Okay, let's make it start here. Let's make it start. Let's make it start. Let's make it start. So the number one reason why hardworking, ambitious, spiritual people with who know that they're called, born, meant for more. The number one reason why these people who really, you know, we, we know the divine, all of that, all of that, all of that, you know how powerful you are, and yet <laughs> you struggle to reach six-figure success. There's a part of me that feels that as we are, you know, we are those that know the divine. We should therefore be those who succeed with ease, right? There's the feeling that, I mean, if you listen to all the manifestation stuff, you go to your religious organization and they're talking, particularly if it's Christianity, then they're just uh, from the front, they're people telling you, uh, if you have faith, or you can move mountains. If you have faith, you can speak the word and the mountain will move. You know, there's nothing, nothing is impossible with you and God, right? Right? And yet, I don't know, I don't know whether these statistics are right or not, and yet, spiritual people seem to struggle most in the, the marketplace, even more than people who do not identify as spiritual or religious in any way. Why is this the case? Why is this the case? One of the biggest, hugest reasons is what we're going to discuss here. What we're going to discuss. But before we do that, let's sing our affirmation for this week, which is, I am the one that wins, right? That's why I'm talking about this kind of stuff. I am the one that wins. So how are you going to ensure that you do win? Well, one, do not make this mistake that I'm going to talk about today. But if you start here, just take a deep breath with me. Take a deep breath in and release. <laughs> in and release. In and release. In and release. Come on, be with me here. I am the one that wins. I am the one that wins. I am the one that wins. I will not be swayed. I always Again, I am the one that will. I am the one that will. I am the one that will. I will not be swayed. I always will. I will not be swayed. I always will. I will not be swayed. I always will. Woo! You always win, man. You always, always win. Now, this, this little thing I like to say to my clients act on your goals, not your feelings. Most people act on their feelings and wish for their goals. Again, I say to clients, and I'm saying this to you, please hear me, hear me, hear me. Act on your goals, not your feelings. Most people act on their feelings and wish for their goals. You cannot be most people. You must be the one. If you're going to be the one that wins, you're the one who brings everything back to, is this thing taking me to my goal or is it taking me away from my goal? Because if it's taking me away from my goal, no matter what you feel about it, no matter how you're feeling right now, you must remember why you're doing what you're doing. I have to say this to clients, even just yesterday, that we cannot be those who allow a bad day or something someone said or somebody or something that made us feel bad then determine what we do next we have dominion over our feelings and this can be uh, interesting especially in the world of manifestation where there's all this talk about you know uh, rise the change and raising your vibration which really does mean feeling good feel good feel good a lot of the time because when you're feeling good you're feeling god <laughs> okay you're feeling good you're feeling god 
you are open to new opportunities. You see things more clearly. You know that state you get into when you're really feeling high, feeling like everything is going your way. Oh, yes. And, and just feels amazing. And everybody's looking for that feeling. I'm hoping that when you get to that feeling, you'll be more creative. You're able to do the things that you need to do. And yes, it's true. When you're feeling really good, it's really easy to, you know, play full out in your business. It's really easy to be that creative, you know, innovative business owner, you know, doing anything you need to do. You feel amazing. But the thing becomes, and this becomes an issue, when you take that whole, I need to raise my vibration, need to feel better, need to feel better. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. I'm not taking that away. But, 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 if you, if the goal becomes, <laughs> I just want to feel good, then that's all you're going to get, feeling good. You are not going to get the goal of a six-figure business because you are not doing the strategies, the practical things that you need to do to bring that to life. But that's just one little example where spiritual people can slightly go off track. It is not that we don't need to feel better. Of course, we want to feel better. We want to feel better. Yes, we want to be taking actions that allow us to feel better. Absolutely, you do. But you also need to be taking actions that take you to a six-figure business or else you will not get it. You will not get it, okay? If you're not acting based on your goals and you are allowing whether you feel good on one good day or not one bad day or whatever, if you allow your feelings, your emotions to control you completely and so therefore you're not taking practical action. And again, this is why, uh, this is why sometimes as non-spiritual people are um, a bit more a bit more reasonable in some ways. I don't like a little area we'd like, I don't want us to be completely reasonable, but I do want us to recognize that people, that certain people that do not identify as spiritual, they know if I want something, I'm just going to have to do something to get that to come to life. Whereas a spiritual person complicates things. I want something, but first I need to appease the divine and then I need to make sure that I'm being a really nice person and then I need to check my motivation and then I need to check that I'm healed and then I need to check and then maybe, and then maybe, maybe, or if I know, I keep hoping that if I do all these other extraneous things, then somehow without even taking action towards building my business, my business will miraculously drop in my lap and I'll be making six figures and it'll be just so easy. <laughs> and I guess, I guess that, you know, we must expect miracles. Absolutely, yes. You're missing the point when you act on your feelings and keep wishing, 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 wishing for your goals. That doesn't work. So other places, you know, people, examples, I give you some examples of how this shows up in people's lives. So you're procrastinating. Procrastinating on doing the actual strategic work of growing a business, of, of putting yourself out there, following your marketing strategy, even creating a marketing strategy that you're following. You're doing the communicate, capture, close every single day. Communicate, capture, close every day. You're not doing it. You're procrastinating on it. Instead, you're doing things like making your website look pretty. Um, <laughs> you're doing other things like creating a new program that still nobody knows about, basically. You're doing all of this stuff, changing the, the, your program name. And so you are, you are busy, very busy in the back end, doing all kinds of wonderful and amazing things. And I remember, to this was years ago. There was a particular client that I used to work with that Whenever I asked her what she was doing, she was very busy, but she was always doing back-end things, back-end things that nobody, none of, nobody that she's called to serve would ever, ever get to know anything about because they didn't know she existed because she wasn't doing the everyday communicate, capture, close, communicate, capture, close, communicate, capture, close. She kept doing all the everything else but that. And why? She was acting on her fear of failure. She was acting on her fears, not her goal. Do you do that? You're not raising your prices. Another example. You know that, that what you're doing, yeah, what you're, you, you're not generating enough income coming through. But instead of seeing very clearly that if you increased your prices, so, and you were still selling the same amount as you are right now, and the chances are that it won't shift much, you would be making a heck of a lot more from fewer people, maybe, but more. And that way you can you have more money to, to invest in the business to reach more people. And so therefore the same proportion of people will probably still work with you, but because you're reaching more people, you have more people buying from you at a higher price. That's the logical way. When you're acting on your goal of getting to six figures whilst impacting people's lives, you recognize as well as, as well as, as well as 
while impacting people's lives, let's let's emphasize this here because you might just hear me talking about the money and, and forget it's while impacting people's lives. If you're going to impact more people, guess what? You need money to come into your business so that you can reach more people. It's very, it's it's just practical. But if you're acting on your emotions of oh feeling guilty that you that you want to charge too much. I've had people saying to me about, oh, but you know, it's my spiritual business. I cannot, it's spiritual gifts. I cannot charge people for that. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Usually these are people that got my six figure spiritual business book and it's like, okay, why did you get the book? If you didn't intend to make any money, <laughs> ultimately. And so then people are, and I did this, I did this too. So there's no judgment for me here. Um, I did this too. In fact, I was convinced that the divine told me that I needed to, to work with people who could not afford anything, basically. <laughs> And, and that was, it was, it was crazy. It wasn't until I started to get to the point of real burnout, I realized, and, and also started to doubt myself because that's also what happens when you keep a drawing to yourself, people who do not want to invest in themselves. So you keep, because you're acting on your guilt and your shame about, oh my gosh, am I just about the money? You don't want to just be about the money. And your fear that people will say that about you. So you're acting on your feelings, not your goal. <laughs> okay, your goal is to make a difference to a lot of people and make six figures, right? But you're acting based on what you want people to think about you and feeling guilty that, oh, I can't serve everyone. You could never serve everyone, even if you charge only a dollar or 50 cents. You can't serve everyone anyway. <laughs> that, that was a given, okay? But if you're acting on your emotions, acting on your feelings, your emotions, what will tend to happen is that you refuse to do the simple thing of ch change your price. For me, that was one of the biggest things that made a huge difference in my business. Just changing my price. Just changing my prices. It made a huge difference to business. Yeah, I did have somebody say, oh, you're just about the money. I was like, well, <laughs> guess what? My children need to eat too. So <laughs> okay, and the truth is, what I'm delivering is valuable. Okay, you come and work with me and I get you to six figures within a year? Seriously. Seriously. <laughs> Seriously. It's worth it, okay? So when, when you're acting on your goals, you'll realize what you need to do in order to keep your business going. Whereas when you're acting on your feelings, you'll keep trying to make everybody happy, trying to please people. It doesn't get you anywhere. Avoiding sales calls. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know that, yeah, you all the gurus and everybody, or a lot, some, some of the gurus anyway, will tell you not to bother with sales calls. They'll tell you, oh, you don't need to do that. Oh, you know, and I'm not saying that you absolutely have to, but I am saying at the very beginning of your business, and if you ask these people who are now telling you that you cannot, you don't need to do it, ask them what they did to grow their business originally. Do that <laughs> rather than doing what they're now that they're seven figures, eight figures, whatever. And now they're telling you, oh, you don't need to do this. You don't ask, what did you do to grow your business? Now, now, whatever. So you might think it's strategic not to um, do sales calls, but I'll tell you right now. Is it actually you acting on the fear of not wanting to have sales conversations with people? You don't want to proactively call people into your business. You're hoping that if you just do enough videos and you do enough, uh, you put enough words out there and you must, of course, the words and the videos are necessary, but you also have to have a call to action. So if you're avoiding the call to action, is it simply because you're afraid? So are you acting on your fear? rather than your actual goal because one of the quickest ways particularly when you're just starting out in business is to have conversations with people live conversations with people particularly if you're building a business online because how else are people supposed to know that you're a real thing not just a scam artist trying to take their money for real so actual conversations with people will help you move your business forward for, for faster as well as give you market research telling you um, what kind of things people need to hear from you in order for them to make the, take the next step. And the other thing is, are you also afraid that by having these one-on-one -on -one conversations with people, people might ask you questions that you're uncomfortable with and then a call to question whether you're, whether you're actually capable of delivering. And so you, the, the one that feels a bit like a fraud, you don't want to have that one-on-one -on -one conversation with someone because you're scared of what they might um, pick up from your energy. And so, yeah, they possibly will pick that up from your fear, but they won't know why, why they're feeling this need not to buy something from you, except you're giving off this vibe of, um, this, I'm, I'm hiding something. What is the choice to show up as someone who is hiding something and is afraid or someone who recognizes, you know what? 
I have a skill, I have knowledge, I have wisdom that can help people. And it is my duty to put it out there in the world confidently and to tell people confidently what it is that I can do. I don't need to wait for some other certification or some other whatever. It is a choice I make to be confident. That's what you need to be telling yourself rather than feeding the fear of maybe I just don't know what I'm talking about. Or, because that's, that's another thing. When people don't want to be very clear about what it is that they deliver because they don't want, they want, they want to say things like, I'm going to help you make six figures in, in 12 months. Because what if they don't? Oh my God, what if they don't? And, it's like, and so the very thing that you need to say in order for clients to, to, to take the step with you, that confidence they want to hear from you as a leader, you are shying away from being so specific because you're worried that, oh my gosh, listen, I can't deliver it to every single person. I can't deliver it to every single person. Why? Because I have no control over what that person does. I know that if you do what I've asked you to do, you will make six figures in 12 months. Now, do I know whether you are going to do it? I don't. So should that, does that mean that I can't tell you that if you do this, that this is the result? Of course not. I know the result if you do it. If you don't do it, no one can help you. But I am here and ready to support you. If, and, and you need to have that energy, that, that confidence that says to people, this is it. This is the truth of the matter. It takes courage to say that. It takes courage to hold your ground. But you have to. So again, are you acting on your fear of what people might think of you? Or are you acting on your deep knowing? I am called for, to do this work. I am, the, I am exactly the person my people need. And you're showing up as that person. The choice is yours, my love. The other thing, another, way, another place where you might be acting on your feelings and your emotions rather than your goals is when you're overcommitting. Overgiving, 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 overgiving. And a lot of people in this community, that is your story. You overgive. But you tell yourself, I've had so many people come on the phone with me and tell me how, oh, it's just because I love to help people. It, uh, you know, I feel alive when I'm helping people. I tell you this, for most of the people that are saying that to me, and, and, and usually if it's been on whether, what level of coaching relationship we have, I will tell you, no, honey, what you love is people liking you, people approving of you. And you're so scared of letting someone down and what they may think of you that you keep giving and giving and giving to the detriment of yourself. And so you keep saying yes to things and that eat into your time, your energy and your money. So you do not have time, energy and money to invest in your goals. And you are not taking the time to really see what you're doing. And so you're telling yourself, no, it's because I'm a nice person. It's because I have to be kind. It's because I'm a good hearted. That's why I'm always giving to people. No, it's a lie. It's a lie, honey. And you're holding yourself back from your own growth. You're acting on your feelings, your fear that people will push you out of the tribe. Instead of acting on, I am here as a leader to transform lives. You're not acting on that goal. You're acting on your fear of lacking approval. Another place that you could um, be um, acting on your feelings rather than your, than your goals is when you take on clients that are not a good fit for you because you're so worried that if you don't take on this particular client, then you will not have, you'll never have money ever again. Who is your source anyway? Who is your source anyway? Do you believe that the divine is your source, that you are capable of bringing to life your vision, that you are the source of your abundance, that you and the divine are the source of your abundance? Or is it the physical reality? We talked a little bit about this yesterday when you're listening to other people's predictions and, and, and deciding that they are the truth over your own ideas. Now, again, are you doing it again? Where you take on anyone, even though you know, having spoken to this person that they're crazy and they're probably not going to do anything. <laughs> but you're worried that you're not going to have enough money. And so you keep taking on clients that in the end, it's a horrible working with them, which then, drains your energy drains your you start to believe that there's something wrong with you and actually no there's nothing wrong with you the people you keep taking on because you're afraid afraid that if you don't take on any riffraff that <laughs> you will have you, you won't have any money again are you acting on your goals or on your feelings goals or feelings maybe you know that you need to get some um to get some interviews, podcast interviews or whatever, but you're afraid of what people will think of you. So again, you do not reach out to, to, um, to put yourself forward as a potential interviewee. 
Are you acting on your goals or are you acting on your feelings? Where you're constantly waiting for your partner to agree with you, for your children to agree with your parents to agree with you before you do anything, checking in with everybody, trying to get everybody's opinion before you do anything, even though most of the opinions you're getting are from people who have never done anything like what you want to do. And yet you keep looking to them to give you some kind of opinion, give you some kind of idea as to whether this is right or not right. Are you acting on your goals or are you acting on your feelings? Which is it? Which is it? Which is it? Where you allow somebody to, you know, okay, so you're doing sales calls and somebody doesn't come when they said that they were going to come. And then you decide that that must mean that nobody wants to ever hear from you. And so then you stop doing sales calls because everybody treats you badly. And then you decide, no, I'm listening to those gurus. Again, again, are you acting on your feelings or are you acting on your goals? Are you acting on your feelings or are you acting on your goals? When you, you hold on to past failures, it's like the story of Lot's wife in the Bible. She looked back and turned into a pillar of salt. You keep looking back, looking back at all your failures, all the mistakes made, and you decide to define yourself by those failures and mistakes made instead of playing full out for the, the, the business that you've decided to create right now. You keep looking back and, and you hold yourself back. So you kind of were doing something, but you're not doing enough to actually break through because you're still acting as if, if I do it, I'm going to fail. I'm going to make mistakes. And again, are you acting on your goals or are you acting on your feelings? What is it? Which is it? Acting on your goals or when a client, a potential client reaches out to you and then you delay in getting back to that client. Are you acting on your goals? Because you're delaying is because there's a part of you thinking, oh my God, she actually wants to work with me. So she works with me and, and then finds out that I'm actually a, a bit of a fraud. And so you don't reach out to this person, even though they're asking you to come and work with you. Are you acting on your goals or are you acting on your feelings? It's, it's, life can be quite simple if you would allow it to be. If you would simply ask yourself, is this action that I'm about to take, is it taking me to my goal? Or is it taking me away from my goal? Sometimes it's mostly it's black and white, towards or away. Sometimes it's a bit shaky, I get that. But you sit with it, you sit with the divine, you will know what the answer is. And sometimes you have to act like a robot, regardless of what you're feeling like at any given moment. If you know what you need to do that day, you just need to do it. If you keep acting on your feelings, Oh, I'm having a bad day today. You know, I deserve to have some self-love days. And I get it. Self-love is absolutely essential. But you see how you can take a little bit of truth and make it kill you. Because, listen, you can still, and I, I, when I'm growing my business, what I had to do at times was, yes, I feel terrible. I don't know if any of this is ever going to work. Blah, 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 blah. But you know what? I'm going to show up today, do my bit. Even if I do the bare minimum, I have my daily musts that I did and I still do. There are daily must that must be done every single day, regardless of how I feel. And then afterwards, I can go break down. I can go cry. I can do whatever I want to do. I can just sit in front of the TV eating chocolate all day if I want to. But I would have done my daily musts for the day. They are never in question. It's never, um, should I, will I? There's no question about it anymore. I had to get into the habit of that. So will you. This, this life that we want to live, where you're making six figures or more, doing what you were born, loved, meant, purpose to do. Understand that most people do not get to get, live this life because they refuse to fight for it. And you're not fighting anyone else for it. You're fighting yourself. Because there will be people around you when you're building this thing that some with good intentions, trying to say, listen, you don't need to work this hard. Just chill out. You know, you don't need to do this. Blah, blah, blah. And you have to fight that. Because there's a part of you that is saying, yeah, it's true, I don't need to work this out. Maybe, maybe this is wrong. Maybe, maybe I'm just not cut up for this. And you start wanting to act on those feelings. You can't, because if you act on those feelings, they become, you start, you create them. You create the reality that you have, you're, you're fearing. What you fear will come upon you. Whereas, so you can't, I don't know, you can't listen to the ones, even the ones that love you. Plus, there'll be the ones that don't love you anyway. <laughs> who will treat you like crazy, like, you know, especially if you're doing sales calls, let's be honest. If you're doing sales calls, you're a service patient, you're doing sales calls, and people don't show up, or they show up, they say they're going to do something, they don't do it. They're, and it happens a few times in succession where people treat you disrespectfully, and you get a choice. 
am I going to act on my feelings of, oh, is this ever going to work? Look how this person is treating me so badly. I just want to sit here and cry and weep. And blah, blah, blah. Or, okay, well, next, next. Some will, some won't. So what? Someone's waiting because I have something that can help my people. So therefore I'm getting out there regardless of how I feel. And I'm going to do what I need to do to get the result that I am committed to. So the question is, what are you committed to? Because I'm committed to Project 334K. I've been committed to this since, whatever, 2014 or so. That I am reaching 334,000 people. I am equipping them, empowering them to live in their purpose and make at least six figures whilst doing so. That is what I am committed to. I am committed to being a wife. I'm committed to being a mother as well. Yeah, great mom, great mother, um, and great coach. Project 334K. These are things. So when I'm making choices, I make choices based on those things. Is it taking me towards those goals or is it taking me away? So this is the number one reason why people fail is because they're acting on their feelings. Acting on their feelings. You are supposed to create your own feelings. Yes, 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 it's great to feel good. But some days you don't, <laughs> okay? Some days you freaking don't. And yet, Yes, there's some growth that comes from learning how to switch up, switch up, but not at the expense of, am I taking steps towards my goals? If I say that I want this thing, am I taking action that demonstrates that I want this thing? The sad thing is that sometimes, you know, especially clients, when I work with clients and they're dragging their feet on doing things. And I'm like, honey, this one post that you are taking 20 years to create, if, if it was the only post you ever needed to create, because that's the one post that is going to propel you into instant social media fame and, and, and changing everybody's life in one second, then great. But it's not likely. You're going to have to do this a few million times. So stop getting so precious about one freaking post. You, why am I saying this? Because we just don't have that much time to spend so much time overthinking, overanalyzing, feeling, 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 feeling all the time, feeling everything, and then acting on how oh, I feel, and blah, 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 blah. And I understand you might have read all the, the, the manifestation books and they talk about how, you know, yeah, you need to feel good all the time and blah, 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 blah. But I have to, you need to look and see these books and these people that are saying this to you, what did they do to be in the position where now you are reading their books and you are listening to them. They did not act on their feelings. They did the work regardless of how they felt. And yeah, sometimes they broke down because building a business, man, man, it will demand so much from you emotionally. The actual steps, not that, not that complicated. But the emotion, when you are feeling strong emotions and wondering why you are doing this thing and you're feeling deluded and still, you have to choose. Am I going to act on how I'm feeling right now? Or am I going to act on the goal that I want? This is the biggest reason why people fail or do not succeed. Because then they convince themselves that no one could feel what I'm feeling and still keep moving forward. It's a lie. All the people that you admire that are doing what you want to do, they felt what you were feeling and they kept going. Will you be the one that wins? It's a choice. Because you can, you can always, because when you think about it, it's just a feeling. So yeah, it feels terrible and it feels heavy, but it's just a feeling. You can still take action regardless of it. How many times have you gone to work feeling horrible? Did you question, oh, do I have to go to work today? <laughs> because I feel horrible. And yeah, sometimes maybe you did and decided to call in sick. But for the most part, you knew that if you did that long enough, you'd lose that job. So, <laughs> so in the end, you just go in and you do what you need to do, regardless of how you feel. If you don't treat your business in the same way, your business will never even be a business. You have to show up. You have to do the practical things to take you forward, that take you towards your goals, that are based on the, being the person who creates that six-figure business that transforms lives. You have to become that person, um, even on the bad days, even when there's still so much of your life that needs to be healed. You still need to take action in the direction of what you want. 
are you willing to do that? Or are you going to keep allowing how you feel at any given moment to be the determining factor as to whether you win or not? The choice is always yours. The divine is with you, whatever you choose. The divine loves you, whatever you choose. But the choice is yours. Do you want the vision or don't you? Will you act even on the days that you feel terrible? That's the question. This is the number one thing that determines whether you will succeed or fail. And remember, failure is a choice. Same as success is a choice. You only fail when you quit. It's the one thing you can be absolutely certain of. And I say this to my husband all the time, that the only thing I know for sure is if I quit, then I fail. And it's always going to be your choice whether to quit based on how you feel on any given day or what people think about you on any given day or any of that stuff. But if you will stay the course, you win. You become the one that wins. Listen, go and get my book. If you are determined to win, you need a strategy to win, honey. Get the book, the Six Figure Spiritual Business Book. Go get the book. The link is around this video or it's in, the, in my bio. The link in my bio, okay? Get the book, then start applying that strategy. If you want my personal help, when the invitation comes to have a conversation with me, book yourself in. Let's have a conversation. There are various points in my business where, depending on what, what, where you're at, I can fit you in to help you, to empower you to live in your purpose and make at least six figures whilst doing so. That is my goal in life. And I'm working with any client. I want to see you make six figures as quickly as possible. If you work with me one-on-one, -on -one, then I promise within a year, as long as you do what I've asked you to do, then that is the result you will get. Get the book. Start with, it all starts with the book. Come into the community. Come into the deliberate, million, me, me, the deliberate millionaire path to peace and plenty, <laughs> is what I like to call it, where you get to live a free, fulfilled, financially abundant, love-drenched life. It starts with getting the book. The Six Figure Spiritual Business Book, as I say, the link is around this video, or see the link in my bio. Get the book. Read it. Start to implement it. Get my support, because if you knew how to get there alone, you'd already be there. Get the book, start there, okay? Until the next time, share this video with somebody else as well. Remember, the biggest thing that will stop you is if you act on your feelings and just keep wishing for your roles. But you get to choose. You can choose always. Is this taking me to my goals or is it taking me away? If I use my time and energy and money in this way, is it getting me where I need to go or is it taking me away? Oh, one I did not even think to remember to, to mention here is where are you investing your money? If you keep investing your money in the same things so as you're afraid, and so that you don't invest in the tools or the support that you need to grow your business. Again, are you acting on fear or acting as the person who creates your goal? I've said this before and I'll say it again. If you're not making the money that you want to be making to in your life, then the money you have right now is a seed that needs to be invested to help you get where you want to go. But that only works if you are acting to, on your goals rather than acting on your fear that you're going to run out and you're going to not have enough and blah, blah, blah. So again, are you acting on your feelings or acting on your goals? That's the question. And that question, if, if you answer it honestly, will tell you why you are succeeding or not succeeding. Okay? Okay. <laughs> Again, get the book. Share this video with someone else. Until the next time, my loves, much amazing love. Much amazing love. You have the ability. You are the one that wins. Okay? You are the one that wins. If you will just not be swayed, you are the one that wins. You contain the divine, for goodness sake. That power within you is unstoppable unless you stop it. You are the, you are the determining factor here. So wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. This is your one life. Stop living the wrong life for you. Wake up. I keep ending this and I keep continuing. <laughs> 
Okay, until the next time, my loves, go forth and prosper. You deserve to win. Please allow yourself to win. Until the next time, much, much love. Bye.